So I just wanted to show, here's a Ford Expedition 2000 5.4 liter. And this is how a vehicle with 200,000 miles cannot have a single leak on it. Nothing leaking from anywhere from the rear end area. We're going to move forward now. Okay, here we are underneath it. And I haven't cleaned this. I don't ever clean this. You can see all the dirt all over the frame rails and everything. See the A-arms. There's a trans pan. There's the rear sill of the trans. Right, uh, let me see. Uh, right there. Where the slip, slip yoke goes in. No leaks. No leaks on the trans pan. No leaks on the rear main sill. I mean, do you see that on a 200,000 mile vehicle? There's the oil pan. Let me try to zoom in a little bit here. There's the oil pan. Rear main sill area. Just a testament, man, to this 2000 Ford Expedition here. This is the, uh, what is it, the 4R100 transmission or R4100, whatever it is. Uh, the same one they used in the early 7.3 liter diesel um, trucks. Yeah, she's got a little tiny bit of surface rust and she's got some dirt on her. But just bone dry, man. 200,000 mile truck right here. Okay, here's the front. There's the harmonic balancer right there where the front sill would be. See how dry that is? Cross member. This has just been a phenomenal vehicle, man. Phenomenal. And I haven't replaced any of these parts to make it not leak. This is just how it's been. Now, the only seepage, I mean, look at the AC compressor, how dry that is. Every accessory on this engine is factory. The AC compressor, the power steering pump, the water pump, I know, 200,000 miles, right? The water pump, the alternator, the power steering pump, everything is original at 200,000 miles. The only thing that seeps anywhere, and as you can see, it doesn't hit the ground or anything, is the power steering pump, the front sill of it. You can look inside of that right there. It's got a little seepage there. It just gets damp and it doesn't even leak. I mean, it doesn't leak on the ground. It just, that little seepage and that little buildup in there over the years. I mean, to me, this is amazing. That a vehicle 200,000 miles doesn't leak anything. Well, what's the secret? I don't know. Some people say it was built on a Wednesday. I don't know. It's just been a super solid vehicle, man. Um, I use 5W30 oil in here, what it's recommended for. I always have. I don't put any additives in it. I change it about every, uh, I don't know, five to 8,000 miles, I guess. Probably about every 8,000 miles I use uh, fully synthetic. I have since... You know, I first bought it. I always use Motocraft filters, nothing but a Motocraft filter. Um, as far as the transmission goes, when I service it, I drop the pan, I change the filter, I clean the pan, um, put the pan back on, and I fill it up with uh, with uh, Ford. Uh, Mercon 5 uh, fully synthetic transmission fluid. And we don't have a leak anywhere on this vehicle anywhere. And as far as the rear differential, I use what's called for the, uh, I believe it's the, um, oh, it's the heavier. I don't know if it's the, 
I forget. But it's the something 140 fully synthetic gear oil. That's all I use in it with the friction modifier, of course, because it has a limited slipper in. Um, but just no leaks anywhere. Um, ball joints are all original, upper lowers, tie rod ends. Uh, I haven't, re I mean, gearbox, all the hoses here. I mean, I hate to kind of say it, I haven't even replaced place the heater hoses. Or wait, I, I did I did replace the lower heater hose, and it wasn't because it leaked. It was because uh, the lower heater hose on this radiator, um, it doesn't use a clamp. It uses a funky one. If you know about Expeditions, you'll know. So I did replace that hose when I replaced the uh, radiator. I have put a couple radiators in here, just because they leak around the plastic tank. But uh, all the suspension, well, okay, I, I did replace the shocks. I replaced those about 150,000 miles, and they weren't even bad. I just replaced them, you know, as a preventative maintenance thing. I replaced all four of those. I always keep good tires on it. I put one set of new rotors on here um, since I owned it. That was about at 140, 150,000 miles. And... Uh, other than that, I just keep brake pads on it. Okay, so here's under the hood. Yeah, it's dirty, man. I don't really keep it too clean. Um, let's see. We still got the original uh, brake master cylinder and uh, um, vacuum, uh, whatever you call it, vacuum chamber. Um, I, I do keep the fluid clean. I've flushed out a couple times since I owned it. Um, everything under here you see is all original, um, with the exception of the intake manifold. I did replace it with the dormant intake manifold around 150,000 miles. And that was because uh, it was leaking. Let's see, where do these leak? They leak right under here somewhere or another. Uh, the plastic uh, cracks under there and the coolant leaks. So I did replace that. I went ahead and used a Dorman part. And uh, it's been on there for 50,000 miles. I ha haven't had any trouble with it. Um, at 150,000 miles, I replaced all the spark plugs since I had the intake off. Of course, I used Motorcraft OEM plugs, and uh, all the coils were good. I went ahead and threw on a set of uh, aftermarket coils just because I was in there. The coils and the boots had no trouble since. Uh, the tensioners are all original on this engine. I know it's hard to believe. All the tensioners are original. I've never replaced any of them. I did replace the belt probably about 140,000 miles. Uh, it did snap around then. Um, so I did replace one belt on it. Yeah, valve covers have never been off the engine. Those are factory valve covers, never been off. All factory heater hoses. I mean, everything you see here is, is you know, well, of course, despite the battery, and radiators. I put either two, I think I might have put two radiators in here. Um, but yeah, that's it. And I think it's worth noting also on this vehicle, which I think is pretty rare, all the sensors on it are all original. The oxygen sensors, the uh, um, everything, the idle air control, the uh, uh, yeah, the uh, it's probably no the mass air is in here yeah that's probably the air intake temperature all original everything EGR um, I haven't had to replace anything on here um, I've, I've never even had a check engine light on this thing it's just been remarkable um, fuel pumps the fuel pump did go out about a hundred and I don't know probably 120,000 miles and 
let this be a lesson to anyone. I don't care what kind of vehicle it is, make, manufacture, so bite the bullet and buy an OEM fuel pump. I went to AutoZone and got one of those AirTex pumps, and I went through three of those probably within two years. Um, unreliable, biggest piece of junk ever. Um, AutoZone quit selling them. They started selling the uh, the Adelphi. Uh, so, you know, I wasn't going to get my money back, so they went ahead and gave me the Delphi. I've had no problems with that. But if I had it to do over again, it would be an OEM Ford fuel pump. If I had a GM, it would be an OEM GM pump. It doesn't matter. you got to stick with OEM if it's going in the tank. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't really done nothing to this. I just keep my oil changes, like I said, about every 8,000 miles. I use fully synthetic oil. I don't use any additives. Transmission fluid, I use the Ford Mercon 5. I don't, I don't, don't ever flush it. I just do the pan drop filter service. Um, that's really about it. Uh, of course, the antifreeze, I do that every couple of years. Uh, antifreeze coolant, brake fluid, you know, that doesn't need to be done too much. I think I've done it twice since I owned the vehicle. Just use my Harbor Freight. Uh, uh, it's a vacuum vacuum pump. Uh, it's the one when you hook an airline to. It just sucks it all out of there. You can do it yourself. So I do that. And uh, I've done the, the power steering there a couple times over the years. That's just uh, her Mercon uh, fluid there for the power steering. Um even even the fan clutch and the fans original on there. Uh, fuel injectors are all original. What else? What else have I replaced? Um, the uh, blend door motor just went out. Um, yeah, last year. Like you know, it already had a hundred and eighty something thousand miles or somewhere around there on it maybe 190,000 miles when it went out but I put a new new Blendor motor in the front under the dash that wasn't too bad um it's even got the original starter on it you know all original transmission it's it's just man this thing's been a tank I mean you can see the valve covers don't even don't even leak on this thing it's just amazing how how well they've uh sealed this engine it's got a little dirt and stuff on there but there's no like you know wet leaks anywhere even down in the intake valley it's dry in there i just can't believe the tensioners are all you know all original the bearings haven't went out or anything uh you know the good old two valve man uh, no, no timing chain issues. No timing chain cassette issues. Nothing. It's just, just been a tank, man. This has been an absolute, just tank. This vehicle. So, uh, anyways, thanks for watching, man. I'm, I'm a huge fan of this 5.4 liter two valve. As long as you maintain it and treat a vehicle right, it'll last. At least this one will. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, this is right up there with, you know, like a. Uh, a Chevy 5.3 or something, you know, those things are known for, you know, their reliability too, if you, you treat them right. You know, any vehicle, you, you beat the crap out of it, it's not going to last. Anyways, thanks for watching, man.